Welcome back. We're reading the Sealed Nectar. We are on page two out of five. And it's the section that says the second Akaba Pledge. And we're in the subsection that says the Articles of the Pledge. Okay. Al-Imam Ahmad recorded that Jabir narrated, we said, O Messenger of Allah, to what shall we pledge? The Prophet answered, one, to listen and obey in all difficulty and ease. Two, to spend in plenty as well as in scarcity. Three, to enjoy in good and forbid evil. Four, in Allah's service you will fear the censor of none. Five, to aid me when I come to you and protect me from anything you protect yourself, your spouses, and children from. The paradise is in store for you. In another version reported by Ibn Ishaq Kaab said, the Prophet, peace be with him, began to speak, recited some Quranic verses, called people unto Allah, encouraged them to enter the fold of Islam, and concluded saying, I give you my pledge that you protect me from whatever you protect your women and children from. Here Al-Bara bin Marur caught him by hand and said, Oh yes, we swear by Allah, who sent you as a prophet in truth, that we will protect you from whatever we protect our women from. Have confidence in us, O Messenger of Allah. By Allah, we are genuine fighters and quite reliable in war. It is a characteristic passed down to us from our ancestors. Then Abu al-Haytham bin At-Tayhan interrupted and said, O Messenger of Allah, between us and the Jews there are agreements which we would then sever. If Allah grants you power and victory, should we expect that you would not leave us and join the ranks of your people, meaning Quraysh? The Prophet, peace be upon him, smiled and replied, Nay, it would never be your blood will be my blood. In life and death I will be with you and you with me. I will fight whom you fight and I will make peace with those whom you make peace. Blood for blood. Stressing the gravity of the pledge. After the events dealing with the conditions of allegiance he had ended, and all the audience were unanimously agreed to endorse it, two men of the early generation of converts who had embraced Islam in the eleventh and twelfth years rose to their feet to explain the others of the serious step they were about to take, so that they could give their pledge fully aware of the whole affair. Yeah, exactly. Never take a pledge that you don't fully understand what's going down. You gotta know. And consequently, be ready for the sacrifice they were expected to make. Exactly. You can't sign away and be like, okay, I'm down. And then it's like, okay, but you gotta give this up. These are the duties are included. And like, well, I didn't know. And it's like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know? Ibn Ishaq said, when they gathered for the pledge, Al-Abbas bin Ubada bin Nadla said, do you know the significance of the pact that you are entering into with this man? You are in fact affirming that you will fight against various people. If you fear that your property will be at risk or the lives of your nobles will be in danger, then leave him now. Because if you do this after the pledge, it will be degrading for you both in this world and the world to come. But if you think that you can carry out what you are called upon to do in spite of the loss of previous lives and property, then undertake this heavy responsibility. And I swear by Allah that herein lies the good of this world and that of the next. They replied, We have already considered the loss of property and the murder of our notables, yet we pay him allegiance. But what is our reward if we observe all the items of this pact? The Prophet, peace be with him, replied, Paradise is in store for you. They said, Extend your hand. Then he extended his hand, and they pledged to him. Oh, cool. How was it done? Is it like, like he's underhand, and then they put it in? Or is he overhand, or is it overhand, or is it like you grab and then you pull? There's a, or I, was, I'm, was it just like this? I don't know. I'd be very, that'd be very cool to see. There's a lot in a handshake. I don't do a lot of handshakes because it's a, some people squeeze on purpose to be like, and you're like, ow, <laughs> you know, and some people are just like, eh, you know, but it's like, I like fist bumping better. Like I go like, 
you know, like, hey, it's a little bit better, but I wonder how they did it. They said, extend your hand. Then he extended his hand and they pledged to him. In the narration of Jabir, he said, when we started to pledge allegiance, Asad bin Zurara took his hand and said, take it easy, people of Yathrib. We have not covered that long distance except because we have had deep belief that he, Muhammad, peace be with him, is the messenger of Allah. We are already convinced that following him includes departure from the pagan Arabs even if it were at the risk of our life. Should you enter in this course, hold fast to it, and your great reward is placed in the hand of Allah. But if you are caught in fear, I advise you to give it up just now, and then you would be more excusable by Allah. Interesting. Taking the Pledge After approving of the Articles of the Pledge, clarification and emphasis, the process of actual pledging began by a shake of hands. Jabir said, after mentioning the saying of Asad bin Zurara, they said, O oh Asad, stretch out your hand for us, for by Allah we will never breach or cheat this pledge. It was then that Asad realized their surety in this cause, and he along with Musabib bin Umair was the primary person inviting to this pledge and the first to take it. Oh. oh, first to take it. Ibn Ishaq said, Banu An-Najjar claimed that Abu Umar Asad bin Zura was the first person to put out his hand. After that, everyone else began to give the pledge. Jabir said, so man by man we stood before him taking the pledge so that by that we would be granted paradise okay got it with respect to the two women the pledge was taken orally for the prophet peace be with him had never shaken hands with an unrelated lady okay now the next section says 12 representatives the Prophet, peace be with him, then asked the group to appoint twelve people to represent their people, being responsible in regard to the articles of the pledge. Sounds like an enforcement, like a task force or like a... I mean, it sounds kind of like, not necessarily like a council, but they, like, they're like kind of like ambassadors, sort of. Hmm. He said... Let twelve men come to me as representatives among you, so that they be responsible over their people. The representatives were nine from Al Khazraj, Asad bin Zurra, bin Ads, Said bin Arabi bin Amr, Abdullah bin Rahwaha bin Thalaba, Rafi bin Malik bin Al Aljilan, Al Bara bin Marur bin Sakur. Abdullah bin Amr bin Haram, Ubada bin Asamit bin Qais, Sa'ad bin Ubada bin Dulaim, and Al Mundir bin Amir bin Kunais. Three others were from Al Awuz, Usaid bin Hudar bin Samak, Sa'id bin Kaithalma, bin Al Harith, and Rifa bin Abdul Mundir bin Zubair. After their appointment, the Prophet, peace be with him, took another oath from these twelve representatives that they would hold the position of answerability. Ah, that means the answerability means accountability. You know, you got a duty. It's a lot of pressure. He said to them, you are responsible over your people in matters among them, a responsibility like that of the disciples of Isa bin Maryam. And I am the responsible one over my people, meaning the Muslims. They agreed to this. So it's like theological responsibility, and this almost sounds like logistical responsibility, right? A devil exposes the meeting. After the people were finished with the process and the covenant was complete, one of the devils exposed them. At the very last moment, hoping to get the Quraysh to gather and witness this congregation first, at the location, that devil stood on the highest ground shouting so all could hear, O oh, people of the dwellings, Muhammad and his youth have conspired for war against you. Oh, 
tag. That would be a little funny. Someone just takes it. <laughs> it's like. He's like, what was that? What did, anybody, did anybody hear something? Like, I don't know. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Dang, man. This is Azab, the jinn of Al Akbar. Oh, it was a jinn. Never mind. Wait. Oh, so it was. Oh, well, you can't throw a rock at a jinn. <laughs> wow, this is Azab. Wow, he has a name. Wow. O oh, enemy of Allah, we are leaving you now. Then he ordered them to go to their camps. Wow. A jinn spoiling things. Dang. Talk about having a hater, right? And you, and you have a jinn hater. You're like, okay, okay, we're getting ready, we're getting ready. And all of a sudden you hear that and you're like, what the? <laughs> Dang. That's freaky. So imagine, like, you got an enemy at work, and sometimes that can cause you a lot of stress, right? Or you got an enemy, like, you got a crazy neighbor, or, you know, whatever. But imagine you had one of your enemies is a jinn. That, like, they don't like you, or, like, they want to foil your, your, your plans and foil your actions. That's a lot to deal with, you know? Oh, <laughs> that'd be terrible. Dang, talk about, I'd get, like, you had to level up. You know, you gotta be able to deal with that. Dang. Spoil the plans. The 12 representatives, huh? And think about these 12 representatives. They just took their oath, right? And they're like, okay, we're ready. We're organized. I understand what I gotta do. And then all of a sudden, they're, this somber feeling is busted by a djinn. Dang. That's crazy.